Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. On this episode of Maker 101, we're going to do part two of Arduino programming. If you didn't see part one of this video, be sure to go check that out. In that video, I talked about a lot of general ideas and words that you're going to hear quite a bit once you start writing code. We went over some basic stuff about variables and control structures and data structures, things like that. So if you watch part one, you should at least have a basic idea of some of the terms that you're going to run into. So let's set up the Arduino and get going. All right, step one, you need to go get the development environment from Arduino. I'll link to it down in the description. Next step is to plug in your Arduino to your computer with a USB cable. Then you need to set up the board. This is really simple. In the development environment, you just go to the tools menu. Then you select the board from the list. All right, now we're ready to look at the basic sketch. The sketch is the code that you write that gets sent to the Arduino. Every sketch starts with two functions built into it that are empty. The first one is setup and the second one is loop. Setup is run one time and it's for setting up everything that we're going to need in the project. Setup is where we might define the I.O. pins and how we're going to use them as input or output. Now, if we needed to set up variables or data structures that could be used throughout the entire sketch, we would want to set those up above the setup function. They'll get defined before setup is even run. So now we have all of our initialization written inside the setup function. Then we move on to loop. The loop function is exactly what it sounds like. It's a loop that runs over and over and over until you turn off the Arduino. The loop is where logic actually happens based on the conditions around it. So for instance, if the loop is running and it's looking to see whether a button is pressed, when you press the button, the condition changes, then the code within that loop can react accordingly. So for example, if it sees that the button is now being pushed, it can turn on an LED. The next time it runs through, maybe you've taken your finger off the button and it's not being pushed anymore. So then the code knows to turn the LED off. So setup and loop are the two basic items that are necessary for a sketch to run. You can write other functions that do different things and have those functions called from within loop and from within setup if you need to. So once you've got all the code written in your sketch, you have to compile it before it can be sent to the Arduino. And like I said before, compiling is taking a language that you and I can understand and turning it into language that the computer or the Arduino can understand. So when you're ready to compile, hit the arrow button in the top toolbar, and that will try to compile the code to send it to the Arduino. If there are any problems, it will let you know what and where the problem is so that you can fix it. Once you've gotten rid of all the errors and all the warnings, you hit the next button over to send the code to the Arduino. So once the code gets to the Arduino, it's going to run your initialization, it's going to run your setup function, and then it's going to start running the loop over and over and over. All right, so you should be all set and ready to go. We've talked about the basics of programming. We've talked about setting up your Arduino and getting it ready to go. And in part three, we're going to wire up a really simple circuit, write some code, and see if it works. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss part three of this video, as well as everything else. I've got a lot of other Maker 101 videos, as well as a whole bunch of projects of different types that you might like. And next time, we will wrap up the Arduino programming video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.